Hello and welcome to the Stitching Kitchen. So today I have a recipe for the Algerian eyelet. But before I work on that stitch with you, I want to remind you that we've had a few episodes where I am showing you different stitches, the cross stitch, Smyrna, etc. And it's time now to teach you about those families and those stitches and what families those stitches belong to. So far I've taught two stitches that belong in the family called straight stitches and cross stitches. Those are the cross stitch and the Smyrna cross. I've also taught you two stitches that belong in the family of stitches called straight stitch, slanted. Those are the mosaic stitch, even though it's on the diagonal, or this way, and the cushion or the scotch stitch. I'll be teaching you tonight a stitch that belongs to the eyelet stitch or pulled stitch family. And this stitch is called the Algerian stitch. And you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of stitches, all in variations. As I teach you a new stitch, look for it in a playlist. Each time we introduce a stitch in a new family, we'll create a playlist for you. So you don't have to slog through the whole entire episodes on YouTube. However, I'd really like it if you did. Wink, wink. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Algerian <clears throat> eyelet today. Its function is to make a lacy look on your cross stitch or your needle point. You can even make letters with it. Although I'm not going to make a letter today, um, you can get the idea. So here is the 18 count linen as we always use for our lessons. And here is the number five pearl in hot pink. Woohoo! But before we use that, I'm going to put our stitching kitchen note paper, which remember you can download the grid paper from the stitching kitchen website and it is free. So this Algerian stitch and let's hope I spell it right because I had a little problem with mosaic. It goes over four threads. The one thing you have to remember is the diagonal stitch in this motif is always gonna look longer than the vertical. So here we go. We're going to start here and we're gonna go over two threads, one, two, to a center hole. And then we're going to go up two threads and into a center hole. Then we're going to go up two more threads and into a center hole. So we've gone over one, two, three, four threads and we've gone into a center hole. Now we're going to move to the right and see how much shorter this stitch looks. And two more threads to the right, diagonal stitch, and then another horizontal stitch and a corner stitch and here's the final stitch. So <clears throat> you can start at any one of these corners that you want. I prefer to start on a, di a diagonal corner rather than a vertical or horizontal because we're going to pull this stitch so that we have a big opening. That's why it's called an eyelet. Okay. We are using, again, the 18 count white linen from Wichelt. They make a really good uh, linen for doing bigger motifs and it's really good for teaching these classes. And we're using a John James needle and we're using DMC Pearl number five. So right now what I'm going to do is I am gonna find a vertical thread because you know how I like those vertical threads. All right. And I'm going to count up two threads, one, two, and over two threads to the right, one, two. Now, we have a tendency to pull when we go in the hole, and if we pull in the wrong direction, we're going to create a big hole over here, and that's not our intention. Our intention is to make a hole in the center, so when you are in the back, you're going to pull a little bit. So you see how that hole opens up? Now I'm going to go over here to the left side and do a horizontal stitch. And you saw how I kept my, whoops, I'm going to lose my thread. Is that the same as losing your mind? Sometimes it is. Okay, I'm going to go into that center hole again. 
And this is probably one of the few times you'll ever hear me say the H word. All right. Where is it? I don't like H words on linen because if you count holes and don't count threads, you'll always dump the thread in the wrong place. All right, now if I leave it like that, it's gonna fill up the hole. So I'm gonna pull it a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go up two more threads. And I'm gonna go into the center. And I'm gonna continue to pull and keep that so I'm just gonna now shut up and stitch and you watch me. And then I'm gonna show you how to bury this or move on to the next one. You notice where my thumb is, it was on the thread. And I'm holding on to the thread on the back. So let me show you that. My finger is on that thread. Doing it, this is considered an embroidery stitch, and you can use it on needlepoint, you can use it on uh, a denser fabric if you're just doing embroidery, and you can do it on cross stitch fabric. See how nice that hole is? I thought it was gonna be quiet, but evidently I can't talk, cannot stitch and talk at the same time. All right. So now I'm making my last stitch. And we're gonna have a pretty little flower here. And a nice little hole. It's not a big gaping hole, but it's a nice round hole. See that? Now, let me explain something to you. Once you start in this corner, all of your stitches need to go in the same direction. This one went clockwise, if you noticed. If you do that, then all your threads are gonna lay flat and they're gonna look nice. This is a twisted thread. Can you see that twist? So if you don't do that, these are all gonna look a little wonky. Now, if I started in this corner, I need to get over here to start another one. So I can't cross over there like that or I'm gonna be in the middle of the hole. So what I like to do is I like to move across the eyelet. See if I went like that, see how it fills the hole? So I like to go across the eyelet in the same direction I was stitching. So I'm gonna lift this gently and lift that gently. And I'm gonna move over here And now you can see that I am um, not filling up the hole and I'm right where I need to be. So I have to go down just a little bit, just adjust it. Remember not to pull, whoops, sorry. Remember not to pull too tightly or you'll um, create more holes. So now I'm in the position where I can come up and share this intersection and I can start again. So I'm gonna this time go up two and over two, and I can kind of sew that stitch and come back this way, all right? And then I'm gonna go up two and two again. So remember this stitch, you can do horizontally, vertically, diagonally. It's a good filler stitch for backgrounds, and it's a lovely stitch if you do it in lots of different colors just for some fun. So please practice this stitch on your stitching kitchen grid paper and on a nice piece of large linen so you can see how it works. Don't forget, you gotta share the stitching kitchen. Please like us and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And I welcome any comments. And if you have any questions, you can email me at Sharon at BrushStreetDesignWorks.com. Thanks so much. And I will see you in the Stitching Kitchen in the next episode.
today we're going to learn a stitch called the scotch stitch or you can call it the cushion stitch. This is a great stitch for sample.